Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to make text or symbols look like they're wrapping around an object. So here we have three round objects. We have two glass ornaments and we have a balloon. Now in the first glass ornament we can tell that it's transparent because we can see the symbols wrapping around the front and we can see them wrapping around the back. The second object is solid, so we only see the text wrapping around the front. The third object is a balloon, and we can tell the balloon is transparent because, once again, we can see the text wrapping around the front, and we see it wrapping around the back. As you probably guessed, we're going to be using WordArt to create this effect, but there's only one WordArt type that actually makes text symbols look like it's really wrapping around an object. Now, what that, in fact, does is make the objects themselves look more rounded and if they look more rounded then they look more three-dimensional so this is a very good way of making rounded objects appear to be more three-dimensional so let's get started so here's our three objects we have two glass ornaments from our christmas series so if you're interested in creating any kind of christmas clip art you can check out that series and we have our nice little transparent balloon okay the first ornament is transparent so we want to see the snowflake wrapping around the front and wrapping around the back. This one is solid, so we'll see the text just wrapping around the front. And of course, with our transparent balloon, we want the text wrapping around the front and we want to be able to see through it wrapping around the back. Now, because this one here just uses text wrapping around the front, we'll start off with this one. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to duplicate the text box. You never want to use the original one in case you mess it up. So I'm going to make a duplicate. If I mess up the duplicate, I always have the original to come back to. Now, the second thing, which is very important, is you're going to have to remove the text wrapping within the box. We cannot have text wrapping around it because once we create the word art object, we're going to squish it within this horizontal position of the, of the circle here. And if you squish it and it wraps, it's not going to give you the nice rounded effect. So it's very important that you turn the text wrapping off. So we have to go to text options. We have to go to text box and we have to say no wrapping. So uncheck wrapping and you get that. So remember, we have to turn the wrapping off. It's the same with the symbols. We cannot have text wrapping. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna just quickly show you the word artifact we're gonna use. So we're gonna go to format, text effects, transform. There's only one we're gonna use. It's called ring outside. There's also a ring inside, but that's not what we're gonna use. It's not gonna help us here. We need the one called ring outside. So there it is. And I'm going to squish this to fit within my circle shape which is why we turned the text wrapping off. That's perfect. And I'll just stretch this down so you get an idea what's happening. So what the ring outside does is this. As the letters come to the edge here, it skews them or flattens them. That's exactly what you want. So you see it works out really, really well here. Now having said that, you can see this is not quite the effect we want. We have seasons here and we have greetings there coming in the back. So that's not what we want. We want the word seasons greetings coming around the front. So what you have to do is you have to duplicate the text because what the ring outside does is just take the text half to the front and half to the back. So if we duplicate the text, we'll have season's greetings come around the front and we'll have a back half season greeting. And the back half just has to be made transparent so you don't see it. And all I have to do now is copy the text and just make a duplicate. So put a space and make a duplicate, okay? Usually when you make a duplicate, you always get the blank line. You got to backspace this out. Let me just make sure that text options. No, nope, I have no wrapping. So that's very important to make sure there is no wrapping there. That's perfect. Okay, so now all I have to do is take this part, turn off the fill. So go to text option, go to fill, and remove the fill. We don't need it. So it's easier to do it here than trying to select it once you turn it into word art object. So remove the back half. We've got that here. We go to format, text effect the ring outside and there it is now all we have to do is squish it to fit our shape and it's perfect there it is and you can stretch this down and you can use a shape handle straighten it out bend it back down so lots you can do with it and you can see how it skews so you can see how the ring outside skews the letters to the edge as they flatten out and it really looks like it's wrapping around now probably the next thing to do is put a nice little gradient in here so it kind of resembles what the glass ornament is. We have some dark areas, some light areas, so we should probably apply an effect. Now the problem is this, if I apply a nice gradient to this, it'll apply to this one and the one we just made transparent. 
So that's part of the problem about making things transparent is that if you want to change the color, you got to make sure you only select the text you want. So I need to select this one. And the easiest thing to do is just to put the cursor here. It's actually kind of hard to select it. So I'm going to put the cursor here, move the typing cursor in front of the S, hold my shift and my arrow keys, and I'll select it that way. Trying to drag with the mouse is a little tricky, so it's a lot easier to use the shift and the arrow keys to select. So let me go to my text options. I want a gradient. Let's say I'm going to choose maybe something like this. Choose a radial. And let's see, I'm going to have a center radial. And I have something like that. Okay, so I'm going to deselect, and there you go. So we have a bright spot here. We have the text wrapping around, so it's bright here, and it's a little darker to the edge. Okay, so that's using two text, or duplicating the text, one in the back, one in the front. Now, you can also do this with spaces. So let me take this. Let me make a duplicate of this. Okay, now the first thing i got to do, of course, is go to my text options and make sure that the, no, oh, see, the wrapping is turned back on. That's not going to help us. So we have to uncheck the wrapping. So you got to remember to turn the wrapping off. Okay, so even when you duplicate the boxes, you have to remember to turn the text wrapping off. Okay, so I need to put spaces. How many spaces do I need? Well, I need one for every letter that's here. So I've got uh, 17 letters and a space between the words. So I need 18 spaces. That's still not going to be enough. Why? Because when you hit the space bar, your spaces are always going to be the same width, but not your text. So having said that there's 17 letters in one space, you don't have to create more spaces to wrap the text around. Let's just do the uh, 18 spaces for now. So I'm going to quickly do that. Okay, let me take the text here. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to move it up. Now, the advantage of this, of course, is because I'm only using spaces, when I put a gradient, I don't have to worry about anything else because spaces aren't going to get a fill. Okay, so now I'm going to put the word art to it. So I'm going to go back to my ring outside. There it is. And I'm going to squish it in there. And you can see what I mean. So we don't have enough spaces to accomplish what we want. So I'm going to put my cursor right at the end of the word, and I'm going to hit my space bar. To push it over so I'm hitting the space bar I'm adding spaces and you can see what's happening it's coming around okay so we got that and once again you can stretch the box you stretch it down make it bigger you can skew it straight it out and there you have that okay so there it is two ways to do it duplicate the text or use spaces now you could also add more spaces if you think the skewing is too much if you think this is too flat you can always add spaces before so if you really need to, you can always add more spaces like that. You can do the same thing here. So if you want the words to be more in the front, just add more spaces and you can force it like this. Okay, so once again, we got that and we could put a nice gradient to it. So so let's go to our gradient and we apply a nice gradient to it. And there you go. So we got two of these, so whichever way you like. You know, each has its benefits. Now one of the things I like to do is I actually like to use a Windows meta file. So I often like to copy the word art here and paste it back as a Windows meta file. That way I can skew this and stretch it out a little easier than I can with the word art. And I think I have a little more flexibility with it. But before I do that, I got to make sure I've got the wrapping shape the way I like it so that I'm happy because I can't change the skew once it's done. If you've never used a meta file, let me just give you one little word of caution here. If you're going to take the meta file apart, it's very important that you don't use a gradient. If you try to copy this as a gradient and paste it back as a Windows meta file and take it apart, it literally falls apart because of the gradient. So what I got to do is I got to make this just a solid color. So I'm going to click there. doesn't really matter what the color is. Just for this sake, I'll make it a green. So I got a green color. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it as a Windows meta file. So I go to Paste Special, Windows meta file, say OK. And it puts it up there. Just drag it here. Okay, so here's our Windows meta file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup it. Now if you've never done a Windows meta file before, you actually have to ungroup it twice. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to group, ungroup. So we're going to say yes. And then you have to ungroup it again. You have to right click, group, and ungroup it again. There's a bounding box, and here it is. You have to get rid of the bounding box. So there it is. I have to click on the empty bounding box and get rid of it. Sometimes this will be one piece. Sometimes it will be two pieces. So if it's two objects, you have to group them together. In this case, it kept them as one object. So we have one object here, and it automatically puts an outline. So we don't need the outline. We're going to remove the outline. Now remember, this is no longer a word art object. This is no longer text. It is just a vector shape. So we have to go to the shape options. So here's my shape options, and here's my line. I'm going to move the line, and I'm going to apply a gradient to it. So it's going to take whatever default gradient was there. So let me remove the word art object here. Let me take this. 
And let me apply that there. So one of the advantages is, of course, that I can stretch this thing. I'm a little more flexible when stretching it. So you can do a lot of skewing and things like this. So I find that a little easier to work with. And I find it uh, with word art, it's a little harder to see this. Windows Metafile, you can really see the skewing and the stretching. So I kind of like the Windows Metafile a little nicer than just the WordArt object. So there it is, Season Gratings with a Windows Metafile. Okay, so a couple different ways to do text when you wrap it around the front. So on this one, we're going to have the text around the front, and we're going to have it around the back. We're going to use the same WordArt effect, but just to make sure you understand how it works, I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to make the second one a different color, because it does something a little bit odd. So you need to see that before we actually finish the effect. Okay, so I'm going to select the text. I'm going to copy it, put a space, and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to select the second one, go to my text options, and just for this purpose, I'm going to change that one a different color. Let's just make it one of these orange colors. So you already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be applying the word art effect to this. So I'm going to go to Format, Text Effect, Transform, and we want the ring outside. So there it is. And I'll just click here, just make it a little bit smaller. So it's going to fit the balloon. Okay, now I'm going to stretch it down so you can see really what's happening here. Now what you notice is that this back part here actually comes in front of this part here. So the orange, which is supposed to be the back, is actually in front of this green part, which is supposed to be in front. So that's just a little odd thing about the uh, word art shape. So just be aware of that, that the back part that you think is going to be the back is actually on top. Now there's several things you can do. Now when I do things like balloons, I generally just keep the text the same solid color. I don't go into the gradients like this. I just leave it solid. So what I can do here is I can take the back one. And what I can do is just make it the same color. So I'm going to make the same dark green. And the difference is I'll take the transparency down. So I take the transparency down considerably like this. And you probably don't even notice that it's actually in front. So that's one thing you can do. You can take the transparency down. And if it overlaps, you really don't notice it that much. You could also do this. You could also grab your little shape handle and you can modify. If you drag it down, you can put a little bit of space between the front and back one. So you can do that that way too. So if you really want to separate it, and maybe you want the color to be darker so it might be visible, then you can just grab the little shape handle and try to separate the lines. So once again, I'll try to separate the lines a little more, and you have something like this. So I can stretch it down, take my mouse, stretch it down, and we have something that looks like that. Now, of course, because this is transparent, and if you're going to do that so it looks like it's going on the back, then it really doesn't matter all that much. Now, my preference is for the Windows Meta file over the Word Art shape, and that way I can stretch the shape and really make it fit the balloon better. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to actually convert this into a Windows Meta file. I'm going to just drag it over here, and what I'm going to do is make them both solid colors. So I'm going to go to my text options, and I just want to be both solid. So I'm going to click that so they're both solid. Now the problem with copying and pasting meta file like this is that we've already shown you, they don't always break off the way you expect. So if I was to copy this and go to paste, paste special, Windows meta file, and I was going to ungroup it, and remember we have to ungroup it twice, and we'll get rid of that bounding box. Okay, so now if I click on this, you'll see it kind of breaks funny. So we already showed you that, that it kind of breaks funny. So the best thing to do when you have stuff like this is to either separate it, and even separating the lines like this doesn't guarantee that it'll break in two spots. So what I like to do is just basically just create two of these, like this, and I'll make one transparent. I'll say no fill. Then I'll take the back one, make that transparent. I'll say no fill. And then I just copy and paste these as a separate thing. So if I take this, and again, if I copy it, and I go to Paste, Paste Special, Windows Meta File. And again, I have to ungroup it. And I have to do that twice. Get rid of the bounding box. And then you have this. These will probably be two different shapes, but that's okay. We can just group them together. Remember, this is a shape, not a word art object again. 
So we have to get rid of the outline. It does have an outline, but it's a shape. So we have to go to shape and say no line. Then we have this, which we can stretch out and play with all we want. This gives us a lot of flexibility, so we can do a lot of different things here. And of course, we can take this one, the back one. We do the same thing. We copy and we paste it as a meta file. Once again, we ungroup it. And we ungroup it twice. Get rid of that bounding box. And this comes as one piece. So it's just funny how it does it. But here we have one piece, which is perfect. And then, of course, this is a shape. So we can take the transparency high in that, remove the outline, drop it here. And now you have a lot more flexibility. Now I can take this one here and I can bring it to the front. So I can say bring to front. So this one is always at the front. As far as I'm concerned, just a little more flexibility than working directly with the word art shape itself. Of course, if this is too much work, you can just leave it with the word art shape. And there it is. You could actually create two word art shapes like we have here and just put them on top of each other. So again, variations on a theme of how to create text that goes around the front and around the back. So the last thing to show you is how to use the symbols to wrap around the shape. Now you can see that I'm using the snowflake symbol from the winging set. You can use any of these things to get the same effect. So right now I'm going to just cancel that. And to make it simple, I'm going to make half of these dark green, half of these transparent green, apply the word art shape, and it's done. Now before I do that, it's very important, of course, and we go to text options, text box, and make sure there's no wrapping. So just like the text, we can't have wrapping. Okay, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to my fill, and I'll give it a dark green. And I'll take half of these, and I'll make half of them transparent. So there they are. Just make it transparent. You already know what we're going to do. We're going to just move it up there. I'm going to go to my format, text effects, transform, want the ring outside, and just squish it in there. And there it is. So this requires the least amount of effort. You can stretch this down, and there it is. So it looks pretty good. It's wrapping around the front, wrapping around the back. You have your shape handle. You can drag it up, drag it down. So you have all the tools and flexibility that you had with the word art shape to do this. Basically just straightforward like that. Now again, you can copy and paste this as metafile if you want to take it apart and, and have more flexibility with it. So there's all three. We have symbols wrapping around something. We have text going around one side of an object. And we have text going around both sides of an object. So now you know how to do all three effects. The next video, we're going to show you how to make text look like it's flowing around a banner or a ribbon. Something kind of like this. So here we have a nice little ribbon. We have light to dark area, so the ribbon really looks like it's moving. And the text is following the same shape. So we've got the text clearly looking like it's flowing with the ribbon. So we're going to show you how to do that in the next video. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you'd like to join us on the next one, again, we're going to show you how to make text look like it's wrapping around a ribbon or a banner. So thank you for watching, and we hope to catch you on the next video.